Hey, I want to thank you for hitting play because I'm looking so forward to speaking and reaching out to you. I know throughout the course of the last three or four days, it's been so much that has come across social media as it relates to 2017. And, and I'm sure that God is, is really connecting and touching a lot of people through words of encouragement and inspiration. And I wanted to take a moment just to reach out to you because this year uh, of 2017 is going to be a special year indeed. We've already, for some people, you've already started. You've lost a loved one. You have um, had to change a job and your new year has started with a little bit, well, not won't say a little bit, but has started with some adversity. I want you to be encouraged and I want you to know that all things will work together for your good, even the bad things that you don't think are going to work out for your good. But I want to get on a social media. I want to share this with you real quick that regardless of how your 2016 ended, this year is going to be, has already begun to be different. And I took some time to share some things that I believe God had put on my heart prophetically for the people that I lead, but also for you who have the courage and have the the, 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 the willingness to hit play, to hear. You know, the Bible says that let him that have an ear hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. And so I wanted to take a, a moment to just share what I believe God is sharing with me about 2017, uh, but not so much it as a New Year's message, but something specific as it relates to you breaking out, as it relates to you coming into who you really are. Enough of me talking, just continue to listen and you will hear more about what God is saying to you. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is Pastor Eric. This is not a normal year. Though it looks the same, it's not. This is not the same. Though it it appears to be the continuation of what you experienced last year because you have to understand that a new season uh, has been established and is moving forward right now. And it's on and, and it's going to move forward on an if and then principle. A if and then principle. Let me explain to you what an if and then principle is. A if and then principle is a principle that is echoed all throughout the Bible, all throughout the times and seasons that that God chose to do things with people in a certain dispensation of time. See, we were born and birthed into a dispensation of time that we couldn't have been born no other time. Though you might feel like an old fashioned person, you might feel like you could have survived in the 70s <laughs> as an adult. You could have came back in the 50s and the 60s. You couldn't have done that because God created you, Jotney, created you, Isabel, Monica, and myself, and everyone under the sound of my voice. He created you for a designated dispensation of time. And with that dispensation of time, Jesus said, I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. See, he used that word might might meaning that even though he came and even though he set your life up according to Jeremiah 29 11 that states for I know the plans I have for you and I know the thoughts I think towards you thoughts of good and not of evil plans to prosper you and give you a hope in the future he said I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly see that that's a if and then if you tell your child I might get that for you I might take you to Disney World. I might come and I might let that happen. That, that what is that based on? That, that's based on if you do this, then I'll do that. Now, now I, I, I set it up because I, I want to bless you. I want to do something, but, but I might do it. The Bible says, Jesus said, I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Not, I came so you can. I came that you might mean it. I provided a way for you to have it, but you've got to do your part in order for what I've planned for you, according to Romans, according to Jeremiah 29, 11, prosperous for you. 
And so tonight I'm going to talk to you about some of the reasons why some things have not manifested in your life uh, all the way up to now, 2017. It, it's, it's not because um, of some of the reasons you may think. Uh, but I, I just want to say this to you, that when Jesus shows up, he shows up almost like out of nowhere. And if you're in the right place at the right time, doing the right thing with the right people, then you meet Jesus along the road to Damascus. If you're that 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 prostitute or that woman that had many husbands and she was in the right place at the right time and had no idea that that when she showed up at that well, Jesus was going to be there to meet her and totally change her life. We're moving into a year where God is going to begin to have those kind of moments. And when he has a sign for you to be somewhere, it's almost very it's imperative that you be where you're supposed to be. It's what you do what you're supposed to be doing. You be in the right place at the right time doing what you're supposed to be doing, because God is going to show up and begin to manifest breakthrough. Now, listen, I know this sounds just like every other, you know, you've heard this before, but no, I'm telling you prophetically. God has released some time release things that's supposed to happen in your life, but they will not happen if you don't do your part. And you have to be in the right place at the right time, doing the right thing with the right people on task, according to his his, his will, moving synergistically with him. And if you don't know, if you're moving in sync with God, you need to start praying that every day. Father, let me move in sync with you. Holy Spirit, lead me according to God's plan. Let my plans die and his plans come alive so that I'm in the right place and that I'm on schedule and I'm moving with God because this is not a normal year. Some things are going to happen in people's lives and it's going to be based on if and then principles. It's going to be based on whether people respond to God right or not. And so you you would, it would do yourself a great justice to be in the right place at the right time, doing the right thing this year. And so I want to take a moment to share that with you, but I'm going to give you one more example before I move forward. I don't want you to think about who's not here. I only want you to focus on who's here because God is here and he was scheduled to be here. He's scheduled to have your ear right now. If you're listening to me by way of YouTube and Facebook, if you're listening to my voice right now, you were scheduled to be here. Okay. You know, I heard Martin, not Martin Luther King, but Muhammad Ali give a illustration one, one day I was up just surfing the internet and I found this profound uh, interview that he was having. And he was talking about uh, a guy was questioning him about the way the Muslim women dress, how they cover themselves up. And, 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 and the interviewer was being extremely um, uh, aggressive toward Muhammad Ali's stance and why he was so proud of his his Muslim sisters by how they dress. <clears throat> now I'm not a Muslim and I don't endorse Islam, but I was really, really moved by this statement that Muhammad Ali made. He said, you know, everything valuable that God put on this earth, he put it in a hard place and he made you have to work to get to it. You have to work to get to a pearl. You have to dig deep in the earth to get to the gold and the diamonds. They don't, they don't just sit on the top of the ground. You have to go <clears throat> out and you have to cast your neat and your net into the water in order to get a big return. You, do, you don't just sit on the dock of the bay and the fish jump out of water and jump into your bucket or jump into your hand, jump into your net. And sometimes, you know, me growing up in Florida, I'm going somewhere, guys. Me growing up in Florida, when I was a kid, I can really liken what Mar Mount, what Muhammad Ali said to something that I thought about as a kid uh, when I used to climb the tree to get oranges. And uh, like the worst oranges, they weren't that sweet. They were like down at the bottom. But the ones that had set up top and got the best sunlight and everything. And, and, and for many people who don't know about Florida, an orange tree has large, thick, sharp thorns all over it. So it's even hard for you to climb the tree to get to the top to get the orange because God allowed spikes to be on the orange tree. But if you get to the top 
you position yourself in, in a position on the top limb and you pull down one of those oranges, the, 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 the reward of the sweetness of that orange, even though you got blood, because them thorns done stuck you all in the legs and the arms, it's worth it. Because I'm telling you, I have something that is not typical. And I'm telling you, this year, right now, this dispensation in time for people who are faithful, for people who are consistent, for people who will pursue God, for people who are obedient, for people who follow God and pursue him. God is pulling back and he's waiting for pursuers to come. And only the people who pursue him beyond how they feel, beyond what's going on in their life, beyond the situation, the circumstance, beyond what their expectations was for 2016 that didn't happen. And, and they're moving into 2017 with expectations beyond what happened yesterday. When we can move beyond those things and press toward God, even though even though you don't feel like be, being on a Bible study on a Wednesday, even though you don't feel like getting up at four o'clock in the morning to pray, even though you don't feel like pressing to, to be uh, in, in a gathering or being around people uh, to grow spiritually because you would rather be somewhere else, even though you don't feel like going out and sharing the gospel of Christ, you don't feel like you know, putting yourself in a position when you can begin to be a caregiver and a and a and an inspiration and a motivation to people who might need you uh, after work hours and things that nature, things that's going to require you to make a sacrifice. That is where God is going to wait for you and going to release in your life, activate in your life the things that you need. Now, why am I saying all that today? Because today was a special and is a special day because of what I'm going to be teaching about. Now, I have a packet for everyone, um, and if you guys can just grab one of those packets along with that book. Um, I'm, I'm giving out uh, this packet and, and those books because I told you in 2017, this was going to be the year that, was, that prayer and fasting is going to be an extreme, extremely important to your life. It's going to be extremely important to your life, period. But it's going to be extremely important to your life starting now. You can't go. You've traveled as far as you can on your gifts and abilities, Jotney. You fought, you, you, you've come as far as you can come on with your, your ability to, to play with things that you need to go ahead and eliminate from your life. You come... As far as you can come, please don't get ahead of me. You've come as far as you can come doing things how you've always done it. You've come as far as you can come seeing things in your life and not shifting and changing. You've come as far as you can come uh, uh, just doing just enough to get by. You've come, you've come as far as you can come showing up late. You've come as far as you can come. You know, rushing to get out early. You come as far as you can come, making other things more important than what God's purpose and will and, and timing is for your life. You come as far as you can come, doing things how you want to do it. You know, God told Peter, "Don't kick against." Don't told Paul, "Don't kick against the goals. Don't 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 kick against the pricks. Flow with me." Flow with me so you can grow with me. If you flow with me, God says, you'll grow. But if you, if you, if you, and he says this to, 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 to you guys right now, to everyone listening to me, you have just been going along. But God is saying, if you listen to me and you just look at your life a little bit different and be willing to do something different. I'm going to move you from just moving along and going along to actually growing, producing fruit in your life. Fruit that's going to bring excitement and joy to your life. Fruit that's going to help you understand that God is with you. Because many people that I'm talking about now here in this room and people that are not here, many people have just been going. They're moving into their, their next birthday. Birthdays are starting to come and go. And if you be realistic, you scanned over your life and you and you and you surveyed your life. Some some people even surveyed their life today and said, man, you know, I should be further along than I am right here. Man, you know, is, it, is this ever going to happen for me? Am, am I really going to break forward? Am I really going to become what God has called me to become? Am I really going to be a success? 
Every man in my family has failed. And now I'm at the stage they were. And right now I don't have as much. I don't have what I thought I would have by now. And I'm wondering at 39 if I'm going to be the same as what everybody came before me was. I'm wondering, even though I press toward the mark, even though I press to move forward with God, even though I press to do things differently, am I, is it really going to come out different for me? Am I really going to, am I going to get to the end of my life and say, wow, look at what I have done. Look at what God has done through me. Am, or am I going to get to the end of my life and say, man, all that Jesus stuff and all that God stuff and all that stuff he was doing with people. And, and, and the Bible says, you don't be mocked. Whatsoever man sow, that shall he also reap. And am I going to get to my end of my life and say, God, you didn't do it. What happened, God? You didn't, you didn't do what you said you was going to do. These are the conversations that people are having. Some people, maybe even you, I don't know. But these are conversations that I know I've had. I've had these conversations since the turn of 2017 and I'm leading people and I'm doing the thing that I thought that I'm supposed to be doing and I believe I'm supposed to be doing. But but there is a there is something in me that won't let me just say. This is it. I know I know that I, we, we're, 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 we're in the early stages of what I'm doing, but I'm thinking there should be more. And then I believe when I get more, I'm going to say there should be more. And I believe that God sets that in you so that you won't get comfortable. So you'll continue to pursue him. It's not going to just happen. You have to do something. But you got to do something different. And right now, this is kind of away from my my notes, what I had planned, because I, I, I was feeling that the spirit wanted to do something special in your life today. And my heart is kind of broken because I, as people I don't see, but thank God for technology because I can record it. And, and I just pray right now, father, that even those that are listening to me right now by way of YouTube and Facebook and those that weren't able to make it here tonight, God, I pray that what you're doing right now in this dispensation, right now, in this moment, you will do it as they listen to this message in Jesus name. Amen. God says, because you showed up, because you arrived on time in the place, he says, he's already moving on your behalf. Amen. That song that you just heard, that was a prophetic declaration Amen about what God's plan is and how he's already moving. Even four days into 2017, God is already moving on your behalf. Mm, thank you. It's already getting better. Your life is already getting better. Your situation is already getting better. Mm. You as a person are already getting better. Four days into the new year, God wanted me to tell you, you're getting better. This is not like it last year. Don't look like don't look at what's going on. Don't, don't, don't judge what's in front of you by what happened behind you. Press forward toward the mark. Leave those things which are behind and press forward toward the mark. OK, move forward. And, and, and God wanted me before you leave. I'm going to lay my hands on you. I'm going to touch you because the Lord says that there are some people. All of us. You've been thinking that he has not been hearing you. You, you. you think that that he has forgotten his promise that he made to you. You, you, you think that 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 he has moved on because there was something that you did wrong. God says he's not like man. He don't he don't he don't move on your behalf if you do everything that I like. And then if you don't do the things I like, then I pull my toys back. But there are certain seasons and times that God will withdraw himself and God will move things out of your life. When you begin to exalt them and make them God and you begin to those things begin to gain more value, more purpose and more attention in your life than him. He will. But God says that the things that you have you have been longing to see, things you've been wanting to see manifest in your relationships. Things you've been wanting to see manifest in your personal career, things you've been wanting to see manifest in your family, things that you have come to God and you've been talking to God about in the last five days. Five is the number of grace. The Lord says he hears you. But he says. 
Be in the right place at the right time. He says, don't grow weary in well-doing. Don't grow weary in well-doing. He said, things are not as they appear. He's calling us to walk by faith and not by sight. What is faith? Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not yet seen. So that's why it's important. It's important for you to follow along what I'm doing. Now, tonight, all of that was just preliminary, what I just said. Tonight, I'm talking about prayer and fasting. But before we move into prayer and fasting, I want you to understand why prayer and fasting is important. The Lord says this year, starting tonight, you're going to see the goodness of the Lord. He said, remain confident in this, that you shall see the salvation of the Lord. Now, what is seeing the salvation of the Lord? What is the thing you've been coming to him about? What is the thing you've been wanting to see happen in your life? What's the thing you've been wanting to see happen in a specific person, place, or thing? The Lord says, stand sure that you shall see the salvation of the Lord. If you lost a loved one this year, and I'm speaking to someone specific who may not even be here, you lost someone that was dear to you moving out of 2016 and maybe even four days into 2017, you lost someone. The Lord says, you shall see the goodness of the Lord, even through a tough situation you may be facing right now. He said, in this thing you be confident and sure that you shall see the salvation of the Lord and he is going to be a God that will not be denied. His glory will not be denied him. And though it may seem tough and though 2016 seemed like a rough year for you and it seemed like it was a year of unfulfilled promises, the Lord said, stand sure and know that you shall see the salvation of the Lord. In 2017, the Lord said he's going to show himself mighty. And he said, if you believe that, he can begin to start that process tonight. The word of the Lord over your life, if you're here and if you're listening to me, is that he's already begun to move on your behalf. That he's already begun to move on behalf of that. The thing that's been over you for generations and you've not known why you couldn't break forth to the right or to the left. You have not understood why that your family kept having this cloud over it. And now you the next person up and that cloud is over you and you've not understood. And the Lord said, if you hear him right now, he's going to break that cycle. He's going to break that chain. And I'm telling you, 2017, you're going to see a new you. You're going to see the you that you've been thinking about but it has not come into manifestation that person is going to show up and God said if you stand strong and you hold fast to what his promise is you shall see the salvation of the Lord now let's go ahead and move forward in what I got to teach tonight guys because God is just moving right now if in ways you don't even know when you when we move into spontaneous worship it breaks up an atmosphere mm -hmm. it it move it opens the heaven over us and it creates an atmosphere do you know god does nothing without glory in revelation if you read the book of revelations and you understand uh, how how God is actually moving. The Bible says that he moves on glory and there are cherubims that he's, that he sits on the glory that they produces and everywhere his spirit moves, they go. And so in this life, in the life you live, worship and prayer and, and is so important. It's more important. If I have to say so, it's more important than just reading and studying the Bible. You have to worship God and you have to pray. Those things are communicative things that move you closer to God and move God closer to you. <clears throat> you could be a bookworm and study the Bible and God's pleased with that. But he still needs, the Bible says, he inhabits the praise of his people. Meaning that as you, as you praise him, he sucks it up. He inhabits it. It goes into him. Worship and praise goes into him. And so if we don't worship him in, in this day and this year moving forward, we are working against ourselves personal one-on-one -on -one time with God in the morning or in the evening or pulling off to the side of the road, pulling into a park where it's quiet and, 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 and you can isolate yourself, turn your music up and go for it. Worship him. God says you're going to need to move spontaneously with him this year. Let me go ahead and get on schedule. Everybody, everybody, if you can sit down, sit down, grab this packet. 
But before you do that, I want you, if you have your Bibles, I want you to turn <coughs> to Daniel chapter 10, and we're going to read verses 5 through 21. My goal is to try to finish our Bible study tonight by 8.45, no later than 9, I promise. But I have to share with you guys what I what I have tonight, okay? If you have your Bibles, go with me to Daniel chapter 10, and we're going to start in verse 5, and we're going to work our way through verse 21. Now, I'm going to go ahead and read that for your hearing. Verse 5 in Daniel chapter 10, it says, I lifted my eyes and looked. And behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose waist was girded with gold, a gold euphas. Let me pause for a second. I'm sorry about that. This... Okay, I'm going to start over. I lifted my eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose waist was girded with a gold euphas. His body was like beryl, and his face was like an appearance of lightning, his eyes like torches of fire, his arms and feet like burnished bronze in color, and the sound of his words was like the, multi, like the voice of a multitude. And I, Daniel, alone saw the vision, for men who were with me did not see the vision, but a great terror fell upon them so that they fled to hide themselves. Verse eight, therefore I was left alone when I saw this great vision and no strength remained in me for my vigor was turned into frailty in me. And I restrained, no, I retained, I'm sorry, no strength. Verse nine, yet I heard the sound of his words. And while I heard the sound of his words, I was in a deep sleep on my face with my face to the ground. Verse 10, suddenly a hand touched me, which made me tremble on my knees and on the palms of my hand. And he said to me, O Daniel, man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak to you and stand upright, for I have not been, I have now been sent to you. While he was speaking this word to me, I stood trembling. Verse 12, then he said to me, do not fear, Daniel, for the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard. And I have come because of your words. Remember that I have come because of your words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days. And behold, Michael, one of the chief princes came to help me, for I had been left alone there with the king of Persia. Now it had now I have come to you to make you understand what will happen to your people in the latter days, for the vision refers to many days yet to come. Now let me stop right there. Now what you what you what I read to you, I read to you an excerpt, but I pulled it out of a conversation. Uh, uh, Daniel was one of God's leaders leading the people of God. Uh, while they had been in captivity, they were led into captivity and God promised that it was going to come a specific day in a season or a dispensation in time where God was going to deliver his people. And Daniel remembered it. Now, listen to me. One man went to the Lord in intercession for 21 days. He fasted. And he prayed for a nation. One man fasted and he prayed for 21 days for a nation. And God sent angels to <clears throat> bring to pass what he was praying for. One man fasted and prayed for 21 days and God moved on behalf of a nation. Now, if one man can set his face like flint toward the Lord. That's how powerful prayer and fasting is, that one man can set his face toward God for 21 days and God moved. Now, what did the angel say? The angel said, now I'm up to point I'm trying to make here. The angel said that at the moment you set your heart to pray, God gave me the word and I, and I, and I was sent from the throne of God. I was sent 
on assignment from God. Not when you finish praying for an hour, not when you finish your 21 day fast, but at the moment that you set your heart to do it, he already sent me moving on your behalf. See, some of you who are sitting here, you already set in your heart, Isabel, to turn toward God. <laughs> now listen to me. He said that I'm already moving on your behalf. And the thing you said in your mind to do, you ain't even got it done yet. And he's already moving. 2017, I don't want to get caught up in this 2017 talk because everybody talk about 2017. But listen to me now. God is already moving on your behalf. That thing that you said you were going to do to move yourself toward God, that thing that you was going to set your mind on, that thing in your life, that thing that's been following you from generation to generation, that thing that's been affecting your family, that thing that's been affecting you, that thing on your job, the thing you've been wanting. God said, you already, the moment you set your mind to come before me and to lay your, make your supplications before me, and, and, and the, moment, the moment you set your mind to do it, he already told the angel, go. Yes. He already, he already, but he says, don't grow weary in well doing. Things are not as though they appear. See, see, Daniel was fasting for 21 days and every day he was in captivity, but he didn't know at the moment that he set his heart to seek the Lord, he was already free. Mm. The Lord had already sent out the word, free my people, go. But the angels had to do battle. Pastor, why does prayer, why did, you know, why is promises and why the things that, that, that even things that I've been praying about, how are they not come to pass? Because of warfare. Spiritual warfare is the reason why it hasn't, it's, that's one of the reasons why it's been delayed. Your faith and your persistence, the Bible says pray without ceasing. Why does it say pray without ceasing? Because when you pray, you activate heaven and you strengthen you strengthen heaven on your behalf. So if you have weak prayer, you have weak manifestation. If you have weak worship, you have weak breakthrough. Worship and prayer is so important. That's why he says worship. He says pray without ceasing. What kind of prayers? All type of prayers. Five minute prayers, 10 minute prayers, an hour prayer, you know, two minute prayers. He said pray all type of prayers. Pray in the spirit. This year, pray, pray, pray. Every year, pray, pray, pray. Let me help you understand something. The reason why I pointed this story out to you is because I want you to understand the reason why God is calling you higher, the reason why he's calling us higher as a team, he's calling you higher as an individual because you are operating too low. And if you keep operating on the standard that you're operating, nothing will manifest for you because the opposition is more serious about the coming against you than you are about breaking through the opposition. And what the opposition is doing, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, the demonic opposition is that they're making you focus on people, places, and things, mm -hmm. and not and, and you you don't and you have lost focus on where the battle is. The Bible says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. God works all things together for the good of those that love him and are called according to his purpose. So if you're someone that loves God, or you be called according to his purpose, all things will work together for you if you if you allow the spirit to lead you and guide you. And if you have an ear to hear what the spirit is saying to the church. So that's for the brother man and the other man. That's for the sister and the brother. That's for the white, the black. That's for anybody that has a voice, ear to hear the Lord. He said, if you move with me this year, I will change your life forever. He said, why do, why do you want me? Why, 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 Pastor, why should we move with God? Why is God asking us to move with him this year? Because we don't have no other year. We can't we can't move with him in 2016. 2016 is gone. We can't move with him in 2018 because 2018 ain't here. So the only year you have is 2017. Why well, said God said move with you, move with him now? Because you don't have tomorrow. You don't have yesterday. The only thing that he has and that you have to take hold of is right now. Stop focusing <coughs> on yesterday. Stop focusing on anything other than right now. Now listen to me. Listen to me. There is warfare. I told you guys in 2017, you're going to have to read. You're going to have to fast. You're going to have to pray because the opposition that has been winning against you, opposition that has been causing your life to spiral out of control. God says, if you use the weapons I gave you, check this out, prayer and fasting, even a person that don't know God can use prayer and fasting and it'll work. 
because it's a godly kingdom principle. But for you who call upon the name of the Lord, he says, <clears throat> watching you be defeated, it's like watching your little brother be watching your seven year old brother who is well capable of beating a three year old and the three year old is kicking his butt all over the place. God said, that's what it's like watching my people let demonic uh, uh, opposition, let situations and circumstances kick their butt when I have given you power to rule, subdue and have the dominion. I've put my spirit on the inside of you and you're supposed to prevail. You're supposed to be the head and not the tail. You're supposed to be above and not beneath. Why? Because the almighty God is inside of you. And if you just do what I say, saith the Lord, you will prevail. You will prevail. But you have to have ears to hear and eyes to see. Now, listen to me. I shared Daniel 10 with you because I want you to go back and I want you to study that. I want you to read Daniel 10. Guys, this year is not a year for me to give you instruction and you don't do it. Go and read Daniel chapter 10. And if you're feeling good, go and read Daniel chapter 11. You know, and if you're feeling good, go and read the whole the whole entire book of Daniel. But I'm, I'm just joking. Just read <laughs> Daniel chapter 10. OK. I want you to read that because I want you to understand, uh, get a better understanding of what it was that I was talking about. Now, we're going to move past Daniel because the whole purpose of bringing up Daniel was helping you to understand that fasting and prayer is a it's a opener and an activator of heaven. But also fair, uh, fasting and prayer activates a greater level of warfare against you because the enemy don't want Jeremiah, don't want uh, 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 he doesn't want um, Jeremiah 29 and 11 to be manifested in your life. He don't want God's purpose and plan that he has for you. To, he don't want you to catch hold of God's thoughts. Now, why, not, why, why is fasting important? Why is fasting important? I want to I want to just do something real preliminary in reference to fasting. OK, take your mind off Daniel and let's move to the first phase. It says in 2017, God is calling us to a light to live a fasted lifestyle. What I'm teaching you on the night is not about you practicing a spiritual principle. It's about you adopting a lifestyle change. The lifestyle change, if you do what the spirit is telling you to do right now in this year, your life will be changed. Your generation will be changed. He says he's calling us to a fasted lifestyle. He's calling us higher through prayer and through fasting. Of course, you know that. Now, what is fasting? I, I'm going to share what fasting is just for the sake of people who may not know. The Bible talks about the spiritual tool of fasting, which can be used properly or improperly. Fasting. What is fasting? And how does God want us to fast? Now, let, let, let me help you understand how you can use fasting inappropriately. When you can say I'm fasting and you don't read and you don't pray and it just become a long diet. And then you lose weight and you build yourself up, you become pompous and think, well, man, I, I fasted for 21 days, girl, you know, you know, I'm deep. And the Lord says, you know what? You didn't pray. You didn't seek my face. You didn't. Then nothing about you changed. If you fast and you pray for 21 days and nothing about you changed. You didn't really fast and pray. You didn't really get into the presence of the Lord because if you fast and pray, guess what's going to happen? You're going to come closer to God. Your senses in the spirit is going to increase and your ability to withstand or to push away and to gain control over that flesh is going to increase. And guess what? The first person God's going to talk to you about when you fast and pray is you. Because he because because he, he he in your face, he in you, you his temple. So he going he going to make he going to do temple maintenance before he start talking about, you know, the third heaven stuff and he's like the Lord gave me a revelation about what's going on in in in, 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 in America. God's been speaking to me about the nations. No. Has he said anything about you? Cuz he's going to start with you first. I I I'm very leery of people who always got a word and uh, and always got a revelation about deep things, but you look at their life and it's so much error. It's so much undone in their life. It's not saying that God don't want to talk to you about nations. God don't want to, to give you revelation about things. But the first thing that God will get you to do is take that moat out of your own eye before he starts revealing stuff to you and start trusting you. How is he going to trust you with, with stuff for some other person? How is he going to trust you with stuff for cities? How is he going to trust you with revelation for nations when you won't even take care of your own self? Your maintenance, your own personal maintenance. So, so I want you to focus um, because we're going to start, we're going to be um, moving into a 30-day fast. 
starting on Sunday. 30 days. But this is going to be a partial fast. I don't know what you're going to fast. I'm going to do one meal a day. And I'm going to. I bought you guys these these folders because that is your prayer folder. That's not to be just tossed and thrown away. That's for you to take and to write notes and to develop strategies and write down strategies for things that you pray for over the next 30 days. OK, that that is a prayer journal. I gave that to you so you can take that with you into your time of prayer. And if you're listening to me right now, you should go to the store and buy you a prayer journal, something that you take and that you can write down because you're not going to always remember the things that you need to pray about. And, and sometimes when you're driving, the Lord will bring it up. Some some people now, while you're listening to me, God is already touching you about things in your life that need to change. If you pray and you seek God, I believe that you're going to see changes in your life for real, for real, like you've never seen before. Now, check this out. So fasting. Fasting, by definition, is going without food or drink for a period of time. Typically, it is done for religious reasons and involves a person refraining from both food and drink. Although, now listen to me, there are variations that may be done for health reasons, like a juice fast, for example, uh, where one person will refrain from eating or drinking, eating or drinking and only drink juice for a period of time. That's very, very good for your body. It detoxifies your body. It gives your digestive system a rest. You know, God don't just want you to grow spiritual, but he wants you to grow healthy too. And so a fast is for multiple reasons. If God calls you into a fast, it's because he wants you to gain control over your flesh. He wants to bring some things. You don't know what's, you don't know what's going on in your body right now. You have no idea. And the Holy Spirit will say, fast. And fasting Sometimes it'll bring your physical body back into recalibration by you pushing away from stuff. So it's multiple reasons why God calls us into a fast. Um, this is, I believe this fast is for twofold. And even those that are listening to me right now, you can, you can come in agreement with us and you can fast for 30 days starting on Sunday. And, and, and but there's multiple reasons. One is for physical reasons because your body has to get rebooted. We have a, a new year. You've done all types of crazy things with your body. I've done all types of crazy things with my body through 2016. But your body needs a, a sabbatical. Your body needs to rest. Your body needs to regenerate. And so maybe somebody even may, may fast where you just, <clears throat> like I said, you, you, may, you may just do juice. You might just do vegetables. Do a Daniel fast. Well, Daniel just did vegetables and, and fruits, and he did water. That's all he did. No meat. You know, you decide how you want to fast, but I need you fasting something. I need you fasting something and I need you replacing some time with God for 30 days. And what I'm going to share with some prayer strategies that we're going to be moving on and some things that I'm going to need you to write into your prayer journal, uh, because there are some things that we got to pray for corporately over the next 30 days. But I need you to put some things in your prayer journal because there's some things that God is waiting for you to petition him on in your personal life. And he will give ear to you <clears throat> if you give ear to him. Don't be unfaithful. If the man of God is saying God is calling us to a 30 day fast. Well, I think he's just doing it for pastor. Maybe that's what pastor doing. No, I'm telling you, that's what we are doing. A 30 day fast. We've never done this before. We've never had a corporate fast before like this. <clears throat> at the beginning of the year. And so that's what I'm calling you into. OK, now. There are different types of fast The you know, in Esther, chapter four, the book of Esther, chapter four, verse 16, she fasted. She, she was fasting food and drink. She didn't do anything. Uh, it says, go gather all the Jews who are present in, Sh in Shushan and fast for me, not neither eat nor drink for three days, night or day. My mates and I will fast likewise. So <clears throat> you see Esther. Esther was a, a, a judge that God had re raised up to save his people, the, the Jews, because they were under heavy persecution. And she was going to be going before the king <coughs> to position to petition on behalf of God's people. And so she asked her people that was with her fast with me. For three days, don't eat no food, don't drink nothing. See, it's something that's powerful about you coming in agreement and everybody being on one accord and doing the same thing. We are considered one body, though we are all different. We're considered one body. 
And I believe if we stay focused and we do follow the instruction of the Lord, I believe there's going to be some major breakthrough that's going to happen on behalf of you, your family, the city, and every area that we hit. Of course, I told you guys about the Daniel fast. You can go ahead and read Daniel chapter one, verse 12. Of course, it says, please test your servants for 10 days and let them give us vegetables to eat and water to drink. <clears throat> I said fruit. I'm sorry. Vegetables to, drink, to eat and water to drink. And so you see here, Daniel fasted just water and vegetables. Now, he was fasting because he did not want to eat. He didn't want to partake of what the other people were partaking of because he knew it was going to defile them and he knew that they were eat. so it was a stance he, he had to make and God ended up blessing him because of it and this is the same Daniel that fasted and prayed and God moved on the nation because of it now fasting in the Bible I gave the notes here guys you can go ahead and you can read it in your own time but the practice of fasting is mentioned numerous times in the Bible as a reaction to various circumstances. Now, this is some of the reasons why fasting is good. Fasting was an act of repentance, as when King Nineveh ordered a fast after preaching, after the preaching of Jonah. Sometimes when there are things in your life that's out of order, and you know it, and God brings your attention. It's good for you to fast in repentance, to posture your life in repentance, to start a new cycle. Fasting starts a new cycle. It, it Fasting is also, uh, it demonstrates humility to God. Number two, fasting was also a reaction to intense grief when the bones of Saul and his sons were buried. Sometimes when we fast, like, like I know, for instance, in the instance where there's a young lady that I grew up with. And it's, it's, it's very unfortunate. I, well, I didn't grow up with the young lady. I grew up with her brothers and her sisters. The younger sister had a baby boy. And the baby boy was hit on a bike two days ago. It was her only child. And he was like, he was a small boy, baby. And he died. And it was her only child. And sometimes when major things happen like that, we fast and pray for God to begin to minister comfort and peace and for pray for God to move on behalf of that family. Cause sometimes people uh, lose all sense of reality and sometimes they lose their ability to cope with life when tragic things happen. So, you know, fasting, you know, and prayer moves God into position to begin to move and to, and to move on that behalf. Cause you, do you know that when tragedy, when tragedy strikes, Satan and his demons move in to try to gain entry into your life through something called trauma. Trauma, there are some people right now who are suffering right now and they can't get up. They can't move forward because at some point in their life, they experience trauma, traumatic situation and spirits of rebellion, spirits of anger, spirits of rage, spirits of lust. Uh, uh, all these things will come in. Uh, spirit of offense will come in when they've been tra traumatically hurt by something and it'll hold their life hostage forever. And so that's why when things happen tra traumatically, God's people need to pray because just like, you know, God wants to move to bring peace. Satan wants to move to bring strongholds. Would you imagine that a person going through all type of turmoil and, 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 and somebody still coming and not showing no mercy. That's how the enemy is. And so that's why, with all this turmoil and things that's going on in our world right now, God's people have to fast and pray. So let me help you understand something. Every nation, every nation has a military and an army. If a world war was to break out, look at me, guys. Listen to me now. I'm going somewhere. If a world war was to break out, y'all, every nation that has an army and a military to protect itself will be able to send up fighters on behalf of their nation, okay? In the physical realm, listen to me. In the spirit realm, the only group of people who have spiritual weaponry to war against a worldwide 
terrorist called Satan is God's people. No other people have spiritual weapons to defend themselves. The world is held hostage by Satan and the only one that can heal Florida, the only one that can bring and release heaven to touch Florida, release heaven to touch your city, to release heaven to touch your unsaved brothers and sisters and cousins, the only one that can be released to touch the White House and can be released to touch the world is God's people. Through fasting and prayer, we hold the power to regulate things in our personal lives, but also regulate things in the world. So guess what? If we don't fast and we don't pray, we're, no, we're serving God no purpose. The scripture says, what good is salt if it loses its savior? If it loses its saltiness, it's not even worth, it's not even worth pouring, putting it on a pile of doo-doo. That's what the Bible said. Or a pile of dung. And when you are a Christian you are a child of God and you don't fast and you don't pray. The Lord says you are worthless. You are worthless to him. You serve no purpose for me. I can't touch your cousin. I can't touch the neighborhood. I can't touch the city. I can't touch the world because my people who are called by my name won't humble themselves, won't turn from their wicked ways, won't seek my face. And therefore, I can't hear them and forgive their sin and I can't heal the land. So the land is being ravished by Satan. Because God's people are not praying and fasting. And you can, we can get people to pile into churches to hear preaching. But we can't get people to pile into churches to pray. We can't get people to line up and get in shifts to fast. Guys, this is going to be the thing that makes or breaks your year. Fasting and prayer. And the study of God's word. This city that we in, this 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 cloud that's that rests over our ministry that keeps us from breaking forth is demonic, and it's not going to break until we get on our knees and we fast and we pray and we say, Lord, what is it that's keeping us from breaking forth? What is it that's standing against us that we cannot see? Move in Jesus' name. There are people that need to hear what I'm teaching right now. There are people that need to be touched by you and touched by you. He said, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves, seek my face, turn from your ways, repent. We have to set our heart toward repenting now. He said, if you don't repent, I don't even hear you. Repentance is, is not saying, Lord, forgive me. Repentance is saying, Lord, that hurts you. I'm sorry. And I'm changing my lifestyle or I'm changing my behavior. God says, I want you, the reason why I'm calling you to fast and pray is because I want to give you a new lifestyle. So you can break the legal right of the enemy in your life and you can keep him at bay so he don't have anything in you. When Satan came to tempt Jesus in the, tent, in, 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 in the wilderness, Jesus said, I ain't afraid of him because he don't have nothing in me. I have not opened myself up to sin. I'm not opening myself up to rebellion. I'm not giving him any room. So therefore, he has nothing in me. So therefore, he has no power over me. But what has he got in you? What has he been having in you for generations? There's something there. And during this fast that God is calling us to, you got to lay it on the altar. You got to write it down. You got to find out what it's linked to, what spirits are linked to this thing. And you have to bind it. The Bible says, bind it on earth and they'll be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth, we loose in heaven. Your biggest fighting is going to be on your knees. I was thinking about a way to, 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 to get some flyers and to do stuff to promote the ministry. The Lord said, Eric, don't waste your money on that. Fast and pray. Seek my face while I may be found. Fast and pray. For strategy. Don't, don't be focusing on none of that stuff. Just fast and pray. And let me reveal a strategy to you. You want to start your business? Fast and pray about it. And he'll give you an idea. Guys, I'm telling you, this is not a time for you to take me lightly and take what I'm saying to you lightly. Fasting isn't just a spiritual activity. It's, a, it's the birthing of a lifestyle. Do you could, could you imagine telling yourself 
Man, I fast every week. I met a man who's doing great things in his life, and I heard him say he fasts every single day. He has told himself, I'm going to rule over my flesh. This man eats one time a day, and he's been doing it for years. I said, how in the world can this man rule over his flesh? But you know what? He's doing powerful things for God. He's breaking through, man. He's doing great things. If you can rule over your flesh, you can do anything. If you can rule over your flesh, you'll stop gaining 20 pounds and losing 20 and then gaining 30, losing 20 then gaining 30. If you can gain over your flesh. If you can rule over your flesh, you'll stop letting that same dude come over and, 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 and give you that booty call. If you can get rule over your flesh, you'll stop getting fired from your job. If you can rule over your flesh, you'll stop being looked over when it's time for a promotion. If you can just rule over the flesh. You'll see breakthrough in your life like you've never seen before. And I'm talking to myself, too. Now, listen to me. Isaiah chapter 58. I'm going to speed through this real quick. Isaiah chapter 58, if you follow with me in the packet. Isaiah chapter 58, verse 3 to 7, it says, Why have we fasted, they say, and you have not seen? They're talking to God. Why have we afflicted our souls and you have and you take no notice? In fact, in the day of of your fast, and this is God responding to them, in the day of your fast you find pleasure and exploit all your labors. Indeed you fast for strife and debate and to strike with the fist of the wicked. The fist of the wicked. You will not fast as you do this day to make your voice heard on high. Is it a fast that I have chosen? A day for man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head like a bulrush and to spread out on sack on sackcloth and ashes? Would you call this a fast? An acceptable day of the Lord? Is this not the fast that I have chosen? Now this is this is what God is saying. See, see what what, what I want to help you understand what I just read before I, I got here. People are doing ritualistic things. They're doing all of these things to, to that, that, that magnifies their form of godliness. And they're doing it for, you know, 30 days. Girl, I'm fasting right now. 30 days, girl. I'm serious. And they, they focus is not a lifestyle. It's just the activity. And God said, is this the activity? Is this the fast that I have chosen? For you to focus just on, on, on the 30 day fast, for you to just focus on your little three day fast, for you to just focus on these little things, these little habits, these little things you're doing only. And this is the thing. This is the thing that God has a problem with. You only do it during that time. And when the fast is over, then you stop. So are you adopting a lifestyle or are you just doing religious things? Just being a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. And the way we've been fasting and praying, the reason why we haven't seen breakthrough is because we haven't adopted the lifestyle. The Holy Spirit is trying to lead you into a new lifestyle. And the only thing the church teaches us to do, not the whole church, but what church, I'm talking about the system, teaches you to do religious things, but not adopt the relationship. God, the kingdom teaches you to do relational things that change your lifestyle. The church teaches you to do religious things that build you up and puff you up. And, and knowledge, but not it doesn't bring you into a place of true fruitfulness. OK, the kingdom of God is not the church and the kingdom of God. The system of church and the kingdom of God are two different things. The kingdom is built on relationships. The church is built on activity and systems. The kingdom of God is built on principles and fasting and prayer is a principle of the kingdom. OK. Now, he says, <clears throat> this is verse six. Is, is this not a fast that I've chosen to loose the bond of weakness, of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, that you may break every yoke? Is it not to share the bread with the hungry and that you bring your house, 
You bring to your house the poor who are cast out. When you see the naked, that you cover him and you not hide yourself from your own flesh. He said, I don't just want fast that brings you before me. But when you get before people, the fruit of the fast is not bearing witness. If when, when Moses was on the mountain for 40 days, the Bible says that he was on the mountain 40 days and he didn't eat or drink for 40 days when he came down with the Ten Commandments. Now, when he came down with the Ten Commandments, the Bible says that the glory of God shone so bright over Moses' face, he looked white. <laughs> the power of the glory. So, and 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 for, uh, as we studied that story of of Moses, that there's a whole nother level that his leadership and his life went to when he came out of that fast. There should be a lifestyle shift that happens when you engage God for a period a period of time. You see what I'm saying? And so I'm sharing all of these preliminary things with you because I want you to understand that this fast, this season of fasting, why is it that God started past a little teaching about fasting and prayer at the beginning of the year? Because there are things that have been happening in your life. There are things that, listen to me, there are things that are over you. There, there are yokes that are around your neck, around your soul and your spirit in the, in the unseen realm that you don't see. And you haven't figured out why you haven't been able to break free from some things that you've been talking to God about. And it's and it's because there are some things that you haven't and that nobody in your family has looked at before. And that's why we're talking about fasting and prayer. Now, there are some things uh, that are left here uh, in this packet as it relates to fasting and prayer. But I want to I want to hit this real quick. Fasting is a posture that demonstrates humility before God. When you fast, you are you are you are presenting yourself in humility before the Lord. What does the Bible say about the humble and the meek? The, the humble and the meek shall exalt shall be exalted, and they shall inherit the earth. So when you come before the Lord in fasting, fasting puts you in a posture of humility. How often do we need to practice humility before the Lord daily? That's why he's after a life, a fasted lifestyle and not just a fasted event of fasting. OK. Fasting sensitizes us to the leading of the spirit when coupled with prayer. OK. Fasting deprives our physical senses and builds up our spiritual senses of faith, discernment and revelation. Now, who don't need faith? Who, who right now can't stand for a little bit better discernment? Who, who can't stand for a little bit of revelation? See, when you don't have discernment and revelation, it's like you're blind and you just you just you're just bouncing up against the wall. You just you just you just you just bumping into stuff. You ain't going nowhere. You just exert all this energy. And listen to me. That's some of you. Some of you. You've been exerting a lot of energy, but you ain't been going nowhere. Mm. Eric Little, you've been exerting a lot of energy, but you ain't going nowhere. It's because I have been, I have been, I haven't been lacking in my faith. I wavered a little bit in my faith, but what I have lacked is revelation, and I have lacked uh, um, discernment. I say this all the time. I said this when I was in college. The most scariest feeling in the world. Listen to me. And it is, every time I say this, it makes it, it, it gives me fear, a godly fear. And, and it moves me to a place of desperation. And this is not an act. The scariest place in the world is not hearing God's voice. Yes. If you don't hear God, what are you going to do? Fasting and prayer puts you in a posture to hear God. If I don't hear God, where am I leading this church? If I don't hear God, where am I leading my wife? If I don't hear God, what am I doing with the seconds, the hours, the days, the moments that he's given me that every day it ticks away? Every day when I'm laying down in the bed next to my wife, a little bit of godly fears on me and say, God, did I do what I was supposed to do today? Because I just lost another day. I just lost one. 
I just lost one more day. And if you're not thinking like that, if you're not, if you're not, if you're not thinking about every second and moment and hour you get and how you do it, if you're not weighing your seconds, weighing your hours, weighing your days, weighing your weeks, weighing your months and say, what have I done for God? Have I done with this year what I was intended to do with this year? Have I done in this month what I was supposed to do with this month? Have I done in this week what God wanted me to do in this week? Or have I spent my whole year, my whole week, my whole month doing what my flesh wanted? And God says, oh, your whole year has probably do nothing. Have you had time to think about 2016 and said, man, how much of 2016 did God have anything to do with, with me? I promise you, if you fast and you pray and you do what I'm telling you, you won't do you won't be fit. You won't be saying this in the end of 2017 because you will see the salvation of the Lord. You won't you won't see some of the same things that's been following you. You'll see some things differently. Fasting deprives our physical senses and builds up our spiritual senses. OK. Now, now I'm, I'm going to say these, these two things that need to be said, and then I'm going to say one more thing and I'm done. Matthew chapter 17, verses 19 through 21. This is for the people who've been waiting for me to read more scripture. I'm coming, you religious person. Then came the disciples to Jesus. They pulled Jesus apart and said, to the side and said, why could we not cast out that demon? Or why could we not cast him out? The, the disciples, a uh, uh, man brought this, uh, his son to the disciples. They were, he was possessed with a demon. I'm paraphrasing what was going on. And the, and, the, and the disciples could not cast the demon out, even though they walked with Jesus, even though they talked with Jesus, even though they ate with Jesus, even though they sat in Jesus, uh, uh, it was one of Jesus' disciples, and they was with the, the God. It was with God. They still didn't have enough authority. They didn't have enough power. They, didn't, they, they had the power, but they didn't have the lifestyle. They didn't have the, the sustainment in their lifestyle to be able to stand in the authority they needed. To cast a demon out. And Jesus said unto them, this is verse 20. Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto the mountain, remove hence and go there and it shall be removed and nothing shall be impossible unto you. However, this kind goeth out, not but by prayer and fasting. Now, what are the three things? What are the three things he mentioned there? He mentioned their faith. He mentioned prayer and fasting. If they had prayed and they had a lifestyle of prayer and fasting, they wouldn't waver in their faith because they would see small victories that would build their faith up. The small things. See, see, faith, when you step out in faith and then God manifests, that's a small victory. Document it. Because when you face that thing that don't seem like it's going to move, go back and say, mm-hmm. Like, like, like David said, well, you was with me when I slowed the, when I slow when I slayed the lion. You was with me when I killed the bear. You've been with me, you know, through all this time. And I got small victories. Not God, if you with me like you was with me with the bear, and you with me like you was with me with the lion, then who is Goliath? Who is he? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine who dares to defy the armies of the living God? I'm like Debo. I'm like Debo. Beat you down, beat him down. <laughs> I beat him down, I beat you down. You know, and that's how you have to go. That's how you, God is trying to move you from, from being a person and move me from being a person that need a breakthrough to move us to being breakthrough believers. We just, we just break through. People look at us and say, oh man, that's a, I'm, if I just watch her, I'll know how to, how to handle every situation that comes up. Cause I watch how they, how she overcomes everything. How she breaks through things, how her life is victorious. Every time I look around, she got a new victory. Every time I look around, Something is different happening in her life, and and everybody was counting her out, and then here she go again. I didn't I didn't figure it out not to bet on her. I I ain't betting on her, <laughs> cause I didn't see her too many times. I ain't betting on her. I ain't betting on her. I ain't betting on him because the God of the Bible is with him. See these things, guys, is what will become of your life when you move into a fasted and a prayerful lifestyle. God will move on your behalf. Now, these are two things to remember, and we're going to close with one last thing before I let you guys go. Now, this is this is for the deep people, okay? Let's move down to the things where it says things to remember about fasting. 
Now, I'm just giving you some foundation. You can study more about fasting as we move through this 30 day fasting, just to get you a better understanding uh, about how to, to, to make this, this, this principle uh, consistent in your life. First Corinthians chapter seven, verse five says, says this, when this is a little side note that I put, don't fast people without their consent. Listen to me now, everybody look at me, look at me. Don't get spiritual and deep and say, I'm going to fast my family for 30 days and not tell them. So they phone, they call you, you don't answer the phone. <laughs> that then you they'll send out an APB for a lost person thinking that something happened to you because you ain't answering their phone call. Don't do that. Don't you don't don't get so heavenly minded that you know earthly good. Don't get so high in the sky that your feet don't touch the ground now. Now you gotta use some common sense when you fast, okay? So you cannot fast people without some kind of consent. <laughs> you know, don't don't be with your girlfriend and be like, I'm gonna fast my girlfriend for 30 days, and then don't tell her. You ain't answering the phone calls. You just you start you just you just flip the script and then tell her. Like you you cause unneeded stress on people. Don't do that. Okay. Now I'm gonna read what it says. Do not. Now this is for married people. I have to tell you this, even though there's some people I'm married and there's some people that are gonna be married and and even people who desire to be married. Understand this. You might have some married friend who acting up, who who doing some religious foolishness. You can correct them. Okay. It says, do not deprive one another. Except with consent for a time, meaning you use some sense, okay, for a time that you may give yourselves to fasting and prayer and come together again now so that Satan does not tempt you because of your lack of self control. So don't, don't be, you know, you know, girl, I'm going, you know, you got this married friend who talking about, girl, I'm going on a hundred day fast, no sex for a hundred days, girl. What's your husband think about it? Girl, I'm, my husband is not before God. You correct her and tell her that's not what the Bible say. OK, now, now, this is not just sex. I just made that reference because many people make that reference in reference to marriage because some married people use fasting as a way to, you know, use God and. You know, because they don't want to be with their, their mate and say, God called me on a 50 day fast. OK, well, if he called you on a 50 day fast, well, he's calling me on a, a one of them 50 every five days in that 50 day fast. We supposed to meet. Well, did he tell you that? OK. OK. He, but but OK. So I want you to remember, you, you, you can't fast people. You can't fast love a, a, a husband. You can't fast your wife. During a fast without telling her. Wife, you can't fast your husband without telling her. You can't, you know, deprive. You have to, you have to, you know, put the other person in to, to, to consideration, okay? Um, it, and if you do decide to fast a person, you use the same principle. You got to do it for a season. Come back. Come back and test the earth, okay? Matthew chapter 6, <clears throat> verse 16 to 18. Now, this is my side note. Fasting to be seen only by God. Okay, don't don't become a religious letting everybody know, girl. I'm on my 15 day fasting. Girl, it's been hard, but I'm making it. Shut up. This ain't about that. Because what you're gonna do is you're gonna you're gonna puff yourself up, and then you become prideful, and then your fast becomes totally null and void. Okay. Now uh, Matthew 6, um, 16 to 18 says, moreover, when you fast, do not be like the hypocrites. With a sad countenance, girl, it's tough, dude. It's tough, man. I've been fasting for, and you know, fasting for the Lord, but the Lord has been speaking revelation to me. I mean, yeah, yeah. Shut up, shut your mouth in Jesus' name. Pastor said that the Spirit didn't. For they disfigure their faces that they may appear to men to be fasting. And surely I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, so that you do not appear to men to be fasting. But to your father who is in the secret place and your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. OK, these are two things that I want you to remember. OK, I made this last page for you to write down some things that you need to fast and pray about. But I felt an unction to go ahead and buy you guys a prayer journal. So instead of writing on this, you can just keep that. OK, now let me explain something to you. I have this book. And I would like this book is called Strong Man, Strong Man's His Name and What's His Game. 
Okay, this is by Dr. Jerry and Carol Robeson. Doctors Jerry and Carol Robeson. I would like every one of you to purchase this book. You're going to have to go online to purchase it. This is a lifelong book. You need it. Would you like you have the Bible? It's not as important as the Bible, but it's a great tool. You need it. If I could find it, I would have purchased it for everybody. But this is something you're going to have to order online. You're going to have to order this online. OK, now this book is dealing with a biblical approach to spiritual warfare. Every Christian that is hearing my voice right now, you will be experiencing spiritual warfare to the day you die. OK, so if you don't know how to fight, guess what? You're going to get beat up, Craig, all the time. And you, you ain't going to be ruling over nothing. You're going to be getting ruled over. Now, let me say this to you, okay? What the revelation that I want to share with you, God, is this. The Lord says that the reason why you have been experiencing, it, this, it's, 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 it's just one or two things that have been persistent in your life that you've not been able to break free from. You've tried to break free from it. You even prayed to God about it. I'm, and I'm talking about, and when I talk about a sting, most people go, most people go straight to something sexual and say, oh, that ain't me. I ain't just talking about that. I'm talking about, for me, men have come in my family, up through my family, very gifted, full of ability, I'm talking about super duper smart, talented, gifted men. And they they could never, they would bud, but they would never come forth. And they would always die with everything in them. My uncle, it happened with my uncle, it happened with my dad, it happened with some of my other uncles that I'm seeing, and it's even happening, and, and, and I feared it happening to me. And I said to myself, God, why is this? Until one day my pastor said this to me and God brought it back to my mind. And I'm saying this for a reason. He said, Eric, everything in your life since I've known you since a teenager, you've had to fight tooth and nail for everything you get. And it seems like you have the most talent out of the whole group, but you produce the less. And I'm trying to figure out why. Why does a person who has so much giftedness, so much ability, so much anointing produce so little? And a person that had that don't even have as much as you produce more than you do. He said, son, I really think that there is a principality assigned to your life. Now, listen to me. Principalities or demonic princes can be assigned to regions, can be assigned to organizations, or they can be assigned to people. They can be assigned to bloodlines. OK. During this 30 day fast, I need you to strongly examine your life. And I need you to if you have a history of debt in your family, everybody, you know, has skills, gifts and ability, but they can't escape debt. debt. I need you to get to the bottom of what it is that is causing that is a root to debt being persistent. Debt, lack, lack being in your life. That is not a sign of the spirit. That's a sign of the, de of the demonic realm having a place in your life. The Lord says during this fast, when you, as you identify things, he says he's giving you the ability to be uh, to bring things before him almost like a high priest did on behalf of your family and on behalf of you to lay it down. And he said, as you lay it down and you commit it to prayer, he said, I will lay the ax to the root. And you've been thinking it's a whole bunch of other stuff. My family, there's mental illness that has been plaguing my family for generations. And it even came at me at 25 years old. And it just keeps bouncing all and moving from person to person. And that is the sign of a demonic prince or a demonic assigned, a, 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 a demon on assignment that has not been bound yet. That has not been clearly identified yet. And the Lord said in 2017, he's ready to put the ax to the root to some things that's been traveling down your bloodline and have made their way to you. He says, 
Take that journal I gave you. And for those of you that are listening to me by way of YouTube and Facebook, go buy the journal and do what I'm telling you. Write it down. Take it before the Lord. These things. And the first thing God says he wants you to do is to repent. To ask him to forgive you and to forgive the people that came before you in your bloodline and open the door to these things. And he wants you to repent. That's why he's calling you to fasting and prayer, because he wants you to take a posture of humility so that he can begin to move on these things. And it, and fasting and prayer is going to activate heaven to move on your behalf. God is getting ready to bring some definite end to some things in your life. You're going to flourish and blossom in 2017 like you have never flourished and blossomed before. OK, and that's going to come through a fasted lifestyle and you doing what I'm telling you. If you want mental illness to leave your family and not have to be able to touch your children, lay it down and let God bring put it to put an axe to it. You got to be truthful and honest about your stuff. If men in your family and women in your family have been dealing with anger and rage and it's in you, lay it down, put it down. Link, find out the spirit behind that thing that you're dealing with. Bind it and lay it before the Lord over these next 30 days. Repent on behalf of your family and repent. At, but ask the Lord, confess the sin to God, ask the Lord to forgive you. And then you have to move into repentance, meaning that you have to remove. You have to set your heart to remove this habit or this thing from your lifestyle. And you're not going to be able to do it in a day. But the book says set your heart to do it. OK. Now, let me say this to you. I want you to study your race. Study the history of your race. If you are African American, then you study the history of your ancestors and what they was dealing with. Because if nobody that has the authority of Jesus Christ has risen up to break the things that they activated through ignorance, it's still active in your life. You're from Haiti, you're a Haitian. Haiti is a is a nation that is under heavy stronghold of witchcraft. And if nobody in your family has ever come before God in the name of Jesus and men and have spoken to that thing. And if you know any uh, any uh, uh, illegal activity that's happened in your family in that region, then you have to cut that spirit off rebellion, lust. Anything you have to cut it off. Uh, African American people, we were brought over, our ancestors were brought over here and enslaved. And the reason, one part of the reason why there's so much poverty in our black neighborhoods and so much poverty in the life of black people, black people can go to some black people can go to college, get degrees, and still don't excel. Because there's a spirit of 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 there's a spirit of um, poverty, we were brought over in great poverty and captivity. There's a, there's a spirit that keeps us bound and that spirit of poverty and lack that gripped the slaves when they were here, that is a demonic spirit. And it, will, it has not left your family yet. If you are Hispanic or, 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 or Hispanic descent, whether you're a Puerto Rican, Dominican, Mexican, a lot of those... Those those people were indigenous. Some of the indigenous people in those area were 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 linked to some African things. Some of them was linked to Native American and all of these things, especially the Hispanics, you know, and, and, and they are linked to witchcraft. Santa Maria, uh, Catholicism, uh, a lot of the the, the 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 European nations that came over and that won territory and established colonies. Those people were under heavy uh, Catholic uh, beliefs and systems and they prayed to pre they prayed to saints and things of that nature and they practiced all of these things that weren't like God <coughs> you have to come before the Lord and say God the things that were opening over my race through ignorance God I come as a child of God with the authority of God and I break that I break the stronghold of these things over your life. So you have things on a much higher plane working against you than you even know. So you've been looking around your front door saying, what am I doing? But some of the things you're dealing with, Jotney, some of the things you're dealing with, Monica, 
and Chica, Isabel, Toya, and all the people that are with me and those that are listening to me, some of the stuff you're dealing with goes back further than you. And this fast that I'm called, that God is calling us on, <clears throat> if you take time to study, if you take time to examine your life, take time to examine your family, <clears throat> anything that's been going on in your family that gone, went on before you and you haven't gone before the God and identified it and come against it and bind it, it still has legal right to operate in your life. The Lord said all of these contributed things, things you've done, things other people have done, and, and some things that have happened that you, you that you know about it in part, you didn't have anything to do with it, but it's still open legal right to the enemy. These things are working against your life and you don't know it. And so what the Lord is trying to do is set the captive free. And so if you've been wondering why is pastor talking about prayer and fasting and why is this important? Because your life depends on it. Your life depends on on, on you hearing what I'm saying right now. You can come and hear me preach every week, but if you don't get this, you may be in store for having another year. That's just like every other year. Father, you're holy and you're awesome. You're wonderful and you're mighty. There's no other God before you but you, God. 